Right now, former New York Governor George Pataki is on the line with us. Uh, Governor, welcome to the program. Hello, Tom. Nice being on with you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. You have started a new organization. You're the chairman of Revere America, as in Paul Revere? Yes, uh, as in Paul Revere and as uh, all of us do, as in loving our country. Okay. Uh, Amen. I'm with you there. Paul Revere helped create a government that opposed corporate powers. As I'm sure you know, the 1773 Tea Party was a revolt, not against the British, but against the British East India Company and the tax cut that that corporation got in the Tea Act of 1773. Why the tax... Uh, that, that, that isn't quite uh, as, I, as I learned it. Um, but we can debate other things. And well, it, it, for a yeah, it actually, I mean, read the Tea Act. It, it, it was. It, it, it's an it's in, it's in Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, but in any case, why do today's conservatives want to cut back government and elevate corporate power? I don't think it's a question of elevating corporate power. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on with you because I think it's important that people who don't necessarily agree have an intelligent dialogue. Uh, and, and to say that the choice is to cut back government and by doing that increase corporate power, uh, it really makes it very difficult to, to engage in the type of serious conversation that I think America needs to have, Americans at the grassroots level and in Washington. I believe government is beginning in a very significant way to be, to, to overtake the people's ability to choose their own course of action. Uh, the whole concept, as I, as I see it, of America is that this is a government of the people where the government serves the people. We are now seeing policies where the government is telling the people what they must do. And I think that is unfortunate, and I think that is part of the cornerstone of Obamacare that I think should be be repealed and replaced with true reform. That does not mean you're empowering corporations to make decisions for people's lives. What I believe we need as Americans and what we have had as Americans is a society that empowers people to make their decisions about their lives. I, I, I'm sure you, you realize that the mandate, the so-called mandate in the Obamacare, so-called Obamacare bill, is a optional. You don't actually have to pay that tax, that penalty, if you choose not to have insurance. It, it, it's not enforceable. And uh, now, I'm sorry, why is, how do you say it's not enforceable? It's right there in the law. It, the, the law says, uh, Keith Ullman did a whole you know, ga- show on this about a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, the I'm law, sorry, I missed it. Yeah, the, the law uh, lays out and and most people don't know this. Uh, you know, most I, I most progressives don't know this. I think it's. Uh, I think I'm most not even people, sure it's most good people lawmaking. Voted on the bill don't know yeah, I I think you're right that that it, there are no enforcement provisions in this bill for people paying that that national tax. But um, you know, yeah, there's I, I, mean, a, I, I think that that is really kind of bizarre. That that you put in a provision of the bill that you talk about is important, so you end free riders. I happen to philosophically disagree with that concept, but then say, oh, don't worry about it, because we didn't say how we're going to enforce it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that, I, that I, is I, just <laughs> emblematic of, in a small point, of how awful this bill is. Well, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of the bill either. I, I personally yeah, would prefer got, a single payer health care system. Common ground already. Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. Terrific. Absolutely. We can solve the country's problems together. Well, I, and we're talking with former New York Governor George Pataki. Uh, Governor, your father worked uh, for the Socialist Post Office uh, all he, he his was life. He a mailman, a letter yeah. carrier. Right, uh, for a, a great socialist organization, the Post Office. The and government you, organization. You, right. I and, wouldn't call it socialist. Well, it's paid for by we the people. Yeah, it was, it was a government not. organization. Okay. Uh, would you um, call Freddie Mac and Fannie Mac socialist organizations? Would you call yeah. the mili- is the military Yeah, back when they were. Yes, absolutely. The military provides housing. It provides well, mil- health care. It's the largest. The military would be shocked to hear that they're part of a socialist organization. They are part of a government organization, but that is not quite the same. Okay, well, I, I guess we could debate this. Yeah, you know, I apologize, know. But, but, you know, I really want to try to talk substance as opposed to, you know, labeling like that. Well, like I'm trying to work here. A socialist organization. Uh, I, it, it wasn't meant as a dig. Now I, we're it, it, the dialogue. Okay, I'm well, let me, let, me, let me rephrase the question. Your okay. dad worked for the post office. Right. You were a delegate, to the, a delegate to the United Nations in 2007. Right. Um, you know, your dad worked for the government. You, you were, I mean, these, were, these are basically moderate positions. These are kind of a traditional American Republican. My dad was an Eisenhower Republican mm-hmm. until the day he 
died. Um, my, my dad was a Kennedy Democrat. Okay, and and you were considered my a whole family were Kennedy Democrat. Right, you supported Howard Mills over Michael uh, Benjamin back in 2004. It took a lot of flack for that because you conservative you, you supported a moderate Republican in New York over a conservative Republican. Are, do you consider yourself today to be a moderate Republican? And no, you know I think uh, people are too quick to label. I'm the only governor in the history of the state to have been elected not just on the Republican line, but on the conservative line. I ran as a Republican conservative, and not just for governor. Every race I've run from mayor of my hometown to the state legislature. And, uh, you know, but labels, I think, are, are uh, different things to different people. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you became mayor of Peekskill in 1981, mm -hmm. the... You've done a lot of research here, Tom. I'm well, it's... <laughs> I'm pleased and honored to have you on the program, sir. Yeah, and I don't think We're, that I was mayor of Pisco was on Keith Olbermann's show. So no, it wasn't. So you did this on your own. This, this <laughs> it really wasn't. impressive. In that year, mm -hmm. corporations, uh, the, the, the top income tax rate on people making over $3 million in today's dollars and billionaires, it was 74%, and corporations paid a little over 30% of the total tax load in America. Right now, the taxes... You, you, all, you also had very significant deductions that were limited by, by and large. No, I'm but, talking about total federal revenues, not not tax rates, but oh, federal okay. re, total okay. federal revenues. It was a little over 30% was, was corporate, mm -hmm. and a little under 70% was, was personal. Mm -hmm. Now, corporate tax revenues into the federal coffers uh, only account for about 7% of total federal uh, revenues. Mm -hmm. And the top tax on people making over $3 million a year has gone from 74% down to 35%, more or less, 36%. And we have this massive deficit, and over the last 30 years, it seems like our middle class has collapsed. Shouldn't we just go back to, you know, roll back the Reagan tax cuts and go back to a, a, a simpler tax system like we had prior to, well, like we had when you became mayor of Peekskill? Well, no, we shouldn't. We should definitely go back to a simpler tax system, but we should not roll back the Reagan tax cuts. If you look at what has happened uh, since those tax cuts, prior to that, you had Jimmy Carter, you had uh, inflation that was hitting 17 or 18 percent a year. You had a belief among the American people that we didn't have uh, a bright economic future. Uh, and no, it, was, it was tough. Which, I mean, we were ringing out the Vietnam War. Ronald Reagan, and you saw prosperity and job growth and job creation, uh, the likes of which uh, are, were, are historic. Well, uh, Governor, respectfully, give me yeah. a $3 trillion credit card. I'll show you prosperity. No, but... Uh, That's what uh, Ronald Reagan did. Second. He, he ran second. up a $3 trillion your dollar president, debt. Your president has a $12 trillion credit card. Uh, he, he, uh, and he is not showing that was George prosperity. Bush. <laughs> The, no, the, uh, the, he took the us from bank, five to twelve. Banks are making record profits, but we're at consistently way too high unemployment. Yeah. Uh, the policies might be working for the few, your policies or, or the Obama administration's policies, but they're not working to create the jobs that a lot of families in this country, good, hardworking families, need. Well, on the point that we we need to bring jobs back to America, we are in complete agreement. George Pataki, the former governor of America uh, or of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Revere America, the company. Thank you, Governor. Tom, thanks for being on with you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you.